Welcome to a new video about BGT differential amplifiers. In this example number six, we will discuss the most complete circuit. So far, we have seen in the previous five examples, step by step, the improvements towards the current source, what we'll call the tail current here. In this case, we also have improved our load, which is now a current mirror in the PMP BGT variations. So we will see that the gain has increased a lot. And also our common mode rejection ratio will therefore also increase. So there will, will be a quite improvement in our complete circuit. So we have an active load, which is called this current mirror, which is called an active load since this is an active device and it is functioning as a load. And we will still use the cascode current source from example number five, which gives us the most uh, or the highest possible output impedance. So let's look at our calculations shortly, step by step, and also verify these in SPICE simulations. So this is the circuit we have here. In total, we have eight transistors. Uh, so uh, six of them are NPN, so Q1, Q2, Q3, up to Q6. And Q7 and Q8 are PMP transistors. So Q1 up to, I mean Q3, Q4, Q5, and Q6. So these four make up this cascode, including this resistor and the differential pair is formed by the Q1 and the Q2. And then, like I said before, Q7 and Q8 is for the active loading. The values for the uh, VCC and V here are shown here, and also the RM. The beta for all transistors are 150, and also the base emitter junctions, also the emitter base junction for the PMP variations are 0.7. The early voltages for the NPN, Transistor it's 60 volts and for the PMP it is 50 volts. That is what's given here. In this case, we would like to calculate the single-ended differential mode voltage gain and also the single-ended common mode voltage gain and then use these two values for the question C for the single-ended common mode rejection ratio. So let's look at our calculations before we move on. Let's designate again this current here IM and this IM will be then calculated using a DC analysis for this part, starting at the ground and then ending at another ground. So we make the full loop. That means that we use the Kirchhoff's voltage law, we know from circuits. So we have the voltage across RM plus the voltage across this base emitter junction, which is for Q6, and plus this Q3 uh, base emitter junction, and then also the VE. Now that will add up here. And we calculate now the IM. So you express now the expression like this. And VE, VBE6 and VBE3 and also the RM will be now substituted in this expression. You will get 2.050 milliamps. Okay, that will be then flowing in this branch. Now, the cascode current, so which is from, from by the Q3 up to Q6, will be then related, relating this IM to IX. And IX is here called the tail current and that is given by this expression. We have discussed this also in the previous example, example number five. This will also take, the, take into account the early effect. We see that here, the VAs for the Q5 and also the Q6. Now, when you now substitute here the values for this circuit, we know what the beta is, we know the, what the VBEs is, and also the early voltages. You will get here, this ratio only is 0 0.9745. Now, when you also use the value of IM just calculated, you can calculate IX in this format. Now that will give you 1.964 milliamps. So the current here will be then this much. Okay, now there's also an emitter current for the Q1 and also the emitter current for the Q2. That is still addition of these two in the DC domain will be always the IX. But in this case, since we don't have a symmetric device, we don't have that anymore because there's this left side is not exactly as a right hand side. This IE1 will be not exactly equal to the IE2. Now this part, the left side, has a lower impedance. You can see that also in the small signal model in more detail. So the IE1 and consequently the IC1 will be larger, slightly larger than the IE2 and also the IC2. So since the circuit is symmetrical, as I said before, the tail current is not splitting in two equal parts. So we will have different emitter currents, but slightly different, not exactly a uh, huge difference. And that will also co has consequence on the IC1 and IC2. 
So we can say it's approximately equal to each other. So we can also say it's approximately half of the tail curl. So we just use this approximation. So the collector current IC1 or IC2, so we just assume that the emitters are exact same, that will be given on this expression. And we now calculate that using also that the emitter current is the half of the tail current. You substitute the values, you will get this 0 0.97 five five milliamps now we define uh, transconductance which is then for q1 and q2 are exact same again using this approximation so we gm1 and gm2 are equal to just gm and we can calculate now this gm using this formula so we need a dc value of the collector current over the thermal voltage which is 26 millivolts at room temperature so we can calculate that now using the value that just determined and also the 26 millivolts for the thermal voltage you get now 0.0375 simons okay so we have now determined our necessary calculation uh, parameters for our first calculation the actual uh, question here in place is a single-ended differential mode voltage gain that is given by this expression uh, let me go back it was too fast maybe what do you see now we look at vo2 or vid so we look at one out output divided by the differential input that is given by the gm2 so it is actually the gm of the q1 q2 or q1 doesn't matter so i have specifically mentioned here the q2 and it is also the parallel combination of the out dynamic output resistances of the q2 and also the q8 because when you look at this node, you see looking here to down, because this point is virtually ground, you see RO2. When you go up from this node, collector of Q2, to that location, to that uh, direction, so you see also another RO, but that's for 8, and this is VCC, which is also AC ground, so you see that these two resistances or impedances actually in parallel. So we need to calculate that. Now we need to also express that in the mathematical expression as shown here. So we need RO2 and RO8. Now RO2 and RO8 are effect of the early voltage. So that is shown here. So RO2 is early voltage over the collector of the Q2. But we know, we have assumed that the collector current of the Q2 and the collector current of Q1 are exact same. We know the collector current of Q1 and we also know what VA2 is because that's shown here. 60 so we get here 61.51 kilo ohms then a similar form for the ro8 and i remember ro8 is for the q8 and that is a pmp transistor and that's shown here which is 50 so lower than 60 and again we know that ic8 which is this current is the exact same as ic2 which is also ic1 so we just use that value also from ic1 here you get now 51.26 kilo ohms. Now you can calculate that because we know everything from this uh, for this expression, and also the values here for the RO, RO2, and RO8. Now you get now here 1048.49. So it's quite high. So we had actually in the previous examples around 370 or 380, and this is uh, yeah almost three times larger so you see that there's a quite an improvement now looking at the single and the common mode voltage gain again the similar expression we have used in the previous examples so this is again the gain of what you should have in the differential mode part and this part in the denominator is because of that common mode operation and this ro capital letter ro is looking here down so that is actually the output impedance looking in the q5 collector and that is, we know from the previous example, for example 5 also, for the CAS code, this is then a beta 5 times the RO5. So again, the RO here, beta is 450, but RO5 is again due to the early voltage. So we can do the early voltage over the collector voltage, or collector current of the Q5. But the collector current of Q5 is just IX. So we know the IX, so that will be then 60 over this 1.9. 64 milliamps you get now 30.55 kilo ohms so that is known so we can then do 150 times this and you will get now here 4.4.582 mega ohms okay now let's now use this information in here 
So we know also GM2, we, have, we know everything also from the previous uh, example, uh, I mean the question. So we get now here and this will give you 0 0.00305. So pretty small. So again, you can see that this improvement of the, the CAS code current source is making this common mode voltage gain quite small. What you also see in this example, uh, the questions A and B, that the gains are positive because when you measure at Q2 collector and then, and then you divide by the differential mode input, you don't have any phase inversion. We will see that shortly in the simulation result also. Now the, the single ended common mode rejection ratio, that is again the ratio of the differential mode voltage gain over the common mode voltage gain, you know that we calculated that already and that will give you 344 times 10 to the power 3 and convert that to the dBs that will give you 110.7 dBs. Okay, we have now done the necessary calculations. We will now start with DC analysis first. This is for the differential mode the left side and this is for the common mode. What do you see? Now, we see the IM which is our reference current which is 2.070 milliamps which is close to what we have calculated. And I X, which is our tail current, is 1.967 milliamp, which is also pretty close, so it's also fine. But you also see that the IC1 here and IC2 here are not exactly equal to each other, because, as we have discussed, this is not a symmetric circuit. Not as symmetric as we had in the previous five examples. But it's close. You see here 984.4, and this is 900. 71.6 uh, microamps. Oh, okay, you can say the error is not that much, but there is an error. So you cannot say that the current here and the current there for the emitter and also for the collectors are exact same. No, it's not exact same. Exact same values. You see it also for the common mode voltage, uh, common mode operation. So you see here the common mode voltage, and this is the differential mode of voltage. So you don't see any differences if you talk only specifically about the DC analysis. So this is checked. Going now to the AC analysis, body plot, we look at the magnitude only. Now you see here three plots. I have actually uh, plotted purposely. You see the red one, which is the VOD, looking actually between the two nodes. But we are interested in the VO2, which is the blue one, and that is almost the same as the VOD. And what is also interesting is that the VO1, so if you measure the VO1 voltage, that is pretty low actually, it's almost, in this case, it's an attenuation because you see here the gain is minus 10.2 dB. So it is not really wise to measure here the voltage, but, but measure there because that is where the gain is. And you see here now the gain, low frequency gain at VO2 uh, is 60.8, let's say, of 60.85 dB, but which is then for almost all frequencies, exact same as a VOD. Okay. And when you convert that in a scalar value using this formula, you get here 1103, which is close to this 1049. Okay, you can say this is still some difference, but in percentages, it is not that much. So we can say this is perfectly fine. Now, looking at the common mode voltage uh, gain body plot, this is uh, also uh, for three uh, cases, uh, for three. Um, voltage so vo1 vo2 and the difference between those two the red one is again a vod and the blue one is only vo2 you see these are also almost exact same and the green one is only looking at the vo1 and the vo1 is the lowest one actually here in this case and the vo2 and the vod are exact almost exact same you see here the values also they are very close you see that it's measured at one hertz so almost dc you might say and this is now what you have as the gain. And if you convert that now to the scalar value, or it went too fast, let me go back. And that is then 0 0.00508. Is that the same as what we have determined? No, it is some error here, you see that. But that is really due to that uh, asymmetric collector currents here. And that will be reflected here in the common mode operation more strongly. Is it a problem? Probably not, because we have uh, sufficient common mode direction ratio and also other parameters which we uh, need to uh, encounter in the real differential pair design. Okay, looking now at the transient response for both cases, common mode and uh, differential mode. Now this is a transient response. You see the couple of plots here. Let's focus directly on the input, which is VID, and the VO2, which is here in light green. 
So what you see is that the input voltage, the peak value is already very small because if you do this, uh, for example, 10 millivolts as we did, due to that very high gain, you go in the nonlinear region. So you need to be very careful with your analysis also in the actual <laughs> measurements. So in this case, I have lowered that from 10 millivolts to one millivolt. So there's two millivolts peak peak. That's actually what you see here. And what you also have VO2, which is measured here, the peak peak value is also shown here is 2.198, so almost 2.2 volts. And when you now do the calculation here, you get here 1099 or almost 1100 as a gain, differential mode gain. But that is again, I think close to that 1049 what we had. This is from the transfer response. What you also see, as we have discussed, and also what I have mentioned, that the VID is in phase with the VO2. It is out of phase with the pink one, but there you see here the gain is pretty small. So it's not wise again to measure that at VO2, VO, uh, VO1. Okay, moving on to the transfer response for the common mode operation. Again, the blue one is our input and the light green one is our VO2. And this is the common mode gain. You see here the peak peak value for this one it's also shown here is 10.156 millivolts and you divide by in this case in order to see the differences uh, strongly i have now increased it from one millivolts to one volt so that's actually two volts peak peak and now you get if you do the calculation here you get 0 0.00508 actually almost the same as we have seen in the body plot so what we have seen is an example is that the active load using this current meter in the using the B, uh, pmp transistors has increased the differential mode uh, significantly that's actually shown here and also the common mode rex ratio stayed the same because we had almost this value also for the example number five where we use the cascode current source and just two resistors here and again measuring between these two nodes so it is in the sense of the common mode rex ratio maybe not that an improvement but looking at a differential mode gain, it is a quite improvement. All right, this is our example number six. If you have any questions, comments about this example, please let me know. I will try to answer them as soon as possible. See you next time in another video. Take care.